Hello guys, welcome back to A3 on Podcast. This is your uh, host, Eric Seves. Welcome back to the podcast, guys. This is your co-host, Charlie Rocha. And today we got a special guest. So go ahead and tell us your name, age, where you grew up, and what you're currently doing or pursuing. My name is Destiny Arias. My close friends call me Bibble. Um, I'm a lash artist, and I was born and raised in Salinas, California. Okay, for sure. So where did it all start? I think it all started, started. honestly, um, I don't even know. I want to say, like, um, I think I started going to Cali to get my lashes done. I just liked the idea of being your own boss and um, your own schedule and meeting people. And like I said, like, I never really did it for the money. I did it for more like the experience and being able to come out of this shell at the time that I feel like I had put myself in. And it really helped me to like, um, just become more outgoing again and help me with my people skills. And yeah. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, oh, tell us like, um, how, how'd you get it? Um, into the the lash business though, like did you did you get out of a job and then you just started like right off or like? Yeah. So what happened was is I went through a lot of jobs. Like I worked everywhere. I worked at like Lowe's, McDonald's, Sonic, Hollister, In and Out, Applebee's. Um, and what was really annoying to me is that the the main thing with managers that our managers at nine to fives is that if you ask them for time off, they're not going to give it to you unless they want to give it to you. Or if they have like those favorite, um, uh, associates, they're going to give you them more hours than you. And I just hate that whole, like, I don't know how you would system. Yeah, exactly. And so that like really bothered me. And I just, um, I knew that it just wasn't going to work out for me, like at a job. And that's why I knew like, maybe I should just try lashing because I I would job hop so bad. Like, I would only last, like, a month at places, and then I would just go to a different place. And I would quit the next month, and then I would um, start a new job. And it was just the same cycle. And obviously, that looks so bad, like, <laughs> for your future employers. Right. But it's yeah. just, like, I could never stay at one place because I just hated, like, the work drama or, like, the, the envy from people. Or, and then just, like, the managers, just, like, everything that I've already, like, you know, kind of explain. It's just, it's annoying and it's a lot. And I would just rather be alone and be picky with who I let into my space in my area and have no uniform, the freedom of like, um, oh, I'm going to take this day off next week because it's going to be nice and hot outside. Or like, I'm going to take these days off because I want to go out, out of town and um, I want to do something with my friends, you know, like, or, and I never, oh, I'm sorry. I never work weekends. That's like such a luxury to me because before I would work every single weekend from four to like two in the morning. And that was so draining. And it was just like, like you never have time to really like do anything. And that's like, like all day, like four to two a.m. I feel like that's what the, that's the time that I go to the gym. Like I go grocery shopping. I go shopping, you know, like, so it's just so time consuming yeah. and. Being able to make your own schedule, I feel like just really, um, that's a luxury itself, you know? Yeah, right, it's, right, it's right. definitely having a job, you know, it takes a haul on you, you know? Yes, like, it does, it does. takes so much personal time away from you, you know? Mm-hmm. And, like, you know, to think, uh, you know, out-of-the-box type stuff, too, you know, like, if, if like, for you that you're doing your business, you can't have a 9-to-5 because then, you know, or, uh, I mean, you could, but, you know, it would be challenging for you because you would have to you know adapt to that and for as of right now well since you do that as a full-time right mm-hmm. yeah yeah then you just focus on that and you know you arrange your schedule and stuff like that so, so. so then i'm curious how, how did you learn like run us down with like honestly when i first learned i didn't take a course and that's so bad like i'm not condoning that or anything right. but it's just like it's just how i learned so that whole muscle memory with like the tweezers and like isolating and all that it takes Mm. a lot of practice i would say and i just feel like um the more that i would practice on my brother's girlfriend um i just started like learning more and more but then i went like something just happened where it just held me back for a long time but i would continuously just like practice like here and there 
And then it wasn't until I started, like, going back to those 95s, and then it was just not for me. So then when I, like, started to, like, come around lashing again, I already knew, like, what to do, basically, because I had that muscle memory, right. and I had, like, like, I knew the little technique. Like, obviously, I wasn't the best. Like, I was still very much a beginner. Yeah. And there was a lot that I had to learn. <clears throat> Excuse me. But, like, it was just easy to start because I feel like I had already known what I was doing, you know? Right. Because I was, like, practicing a little bit for, like, so long. I feel like I practiced for, like, a year before I actually, like, pursued it. So I think that's what really helped me, like, I think um, pick up the pace. Because for me, I say this in the most humble way ever. When I started lashing, it did not take me a long time to build clientele and um, have decent retention. Obviously, right. right away, like, my retention wasn't the best. But I would have my clients pay for what I knew it was worth. So I was mm -hmm. only charging people $45 for a full set, any set that they wanted. I would only charge them $45. And my mom was so mad at me. She was like, you do such a good job. Why are you only charging $45? And I was like, it's business. Like you just, like this is how I need to like grab people's attention is by like, like giving them a low price because I know my, my retention isn't that good anyway, you know? and. They're gonna come back. Like it's it's cheap. Everybody charges over one fifty right now for like a volume set. I was charging forty five dollars. Yeah. And yeah, I just um I think like that and just because my personality maybe and I was able to like mix really well with a lot of the people that came at first and then I would t always tell them like please like post my lash page if um if you post your lashes and I just feel like that did, like, it did a lot for me, and I met a lot of people, and, like, I'm just, I always say I'm very grateful and very blessed to have had this work out for me the way that it did, because right. I went in, like, knowing nothing, I feel like, yeah. you know? So, wait, wait, so was it trial and error, or was it, like, YouTube? Like, how did you, how did, you know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. how did you learn? I learned, kind of, like... Like the like isolation, like the basics Basic. through TikTok. Through TikTok. But then okay. I took an online course, mm -hmm. and then that's like how I got certified and stuff. Like they made me like send me pictures of like my work, and I don't know. It worked out for me, and um, I regardless of that, I feel like that's not um, how you say it, like. Um, I don't know the word to say, but I just don't feel like that's the best option. And right. I just think I'm a clean freak when it comes to my clients, their work, especially because I'm working on their eyes. So anything I can do to just um, up my technique or my cleanliness, I'm going to do it. So I would sit down on TikTok and I would do extra research like what are the best tools to clean your tweezers? What's the best way to like um, just for anything? And she's the one that's telling me about yeah about um cleaning the lashes before i start and i do that religiously to all my clients i yell at all my friends please clean your lashes because you guys are re representing me as a lash tech and if your lashes are dirty i'm gonna be pissed at you and they're all like mm, some of them are are good at it but majority they're still like they have that bad habit where they just do not clean their lashes but i look at them and i'm like did you clean your lashes and they're like no <laughs> but yeah so yeah. i think mostly I learned from TikTok, oh. and then I le I had that um, course that I took online, but a lot of it did come from Callie, my lash tech. Like, she put me on a lot of game, and I really owe it to her. So did you so, start so. with a friend, or, like, who was the first person you put, like, lashes on? Uh, my brother's girlfriend, Dana. She came mm -hmm. How did and that go? Honestly, she How long is, did it take you? It took me a while. Yeah. Like... <laughs> she's a saint. She's an angel for sitting there and just, like, letting me do whatever I wanted to do. Because she would sit there. Um, actually, when I first, first did it, I did it with, like, non-professional glue. Because the professional glue has really strong fumes. And because I didn't know what I was doing, that intimidated me. And I just did not feel comfortable working with that on somebody's eyes. So I started out with, like, this temporary glue. And it would come off in, like, one or two days. But regardless, like, I was still practicing, you know? Yeah. And she let me in. Um, when I did get the professional glue, she would lay there for, like, four, five, six hours at Damn. a time. And sometimes, like, in those hours, I would literally only finish one eye. Yeah. Because it's just so hard at first. Like, when you're first getting that technique down and stuff. Right. Excuse me. Yeah, so, like... And I remember my first client I took, like my first official client was my friend Brianna. 
and I took, um, I think four or five hours on her. And I didn't even get every single lash. There was so many <laughs> gaps, but yeah. And then, and then my cousin, she was like my next like official client and she has so many lashes. She has like layers and layers of lashes and they're all so thick. And I took six hours on her and she slept through all of it because she had just came from work. So it worked out. Yeah. But, yeah. That's crazy. That's crazy. Mm-hmm. Can you go ahead and uh, run us through your daily routine? How does it look yeah. like? So a typical day, like if I have four clients a day, I think like five is five or six is like the max that I'll do. But if I have a four day client, four, four <laughs> clients a day, what I do is I typically like I wake up like an hour before because I have to commute. So I wake up, I um, clean my kitty's litter. I feed them, I shower, and then I do my little skincare routine, and then I just, I honestly throw whatever I want on, like I always show up really comfortable, and then I go, and then typically I take two hours on all my clients, so I'll finish the first set, and then I'll go eat something, because I I work at my mom's house, and then after I eat, I take my next client, and then I take a little break, and then next client, take a break, next client, and then right after, I go to the gym. And then after the gym, um, it's already like, because I finished my last client at like 8, 8.30. And then by the time I go to the gym, it's already like 9. And I don't come home till like 11. And then I wake up the next day, like at 9 a.m., sometimes earlier. But I can't do really early. I'm, I suck at waking up. And that's <laughs> something that I'm working on. But, um, yeah, that's typically my routine. Is 8 the latest you'll take a client? Um, if they pay the squeeze in or after hours fee, I will take people as late as they want me to. But a lot of people have an issue with like paying that fee. But it's like, this is like my issue with clients that like have an issue with that squeeze in fee is like, I already make my schedule to where like, I'm already trying to fit as many people as I can in. But I still want to go to the gym. I still want to go grocery shopping. I want to go home and do laundry. I want to go lay down with my cats. Like, I want to, you know, like, and that's not to say that, like, like, I can't do that or, like, I don't want to. It's just that I'm trying to make everybody fit in, you know, and into my schedule. And when people, like, when they have a hard time accepting the fact that, like, you have to pay that fee. It's not because I want to charge you or I'm trying to take your money. It's just like, it's such an inconvenience sometimes when I don't have time for myself. And I feel like yeah. throughout the week when I am lashing, I rarely have time to like really sit down and eat. Or I rarely have time to like talk to my mom, talk to my dad. Like, And my mom always tells me, you're so MIA. Like, we never see you. You're always working. Like, And then like she's like, why, why are you never like here? And I literally work outside of my mom's house, you know? And I just tell her like, dude, like I'm just... I'm busy, like, I don't know what to tell you, you know, like, um, it's not because I don't want to talk to you guys, it's just, like, sometimes my clients, this is why fills and full sets are so, like, such a different thing, because if my client comes in for a fill, but she needs a full set, that just takes away some time that I could go inside the house and say something to my mom, I could go and, like, talk to her, and typically, be I, like, love this, the, um, about my mom so much, is that, when she cooks at home or when she brings, like, takeout, she's always, like, come and eat, come and eat. And I'm like, Mom, I'm with a client. I'm sorry. Yeah. Or I'll, I'll be like, I'm sorry. Like, I have to go to the gym right now because I want to go too late. Like, and that's just, that's the reason for the after hours fee. It's like, I don't care. I will do your lashes at 3 in the morning, you know? Yeah. But it's like, like, you guys, you know, I feel like people fail to realize that lash techs, nail techs, barbers, everything. Like, we have a life outside of our yeah. business, you know? Like, we want to do these things and... We just can sometimes because, like, we're just so, like, consumed into our work. And that's why I incorporate the weekends or at least one day out of the week for myself because it gets tiring. And then, like, it just becomes such a routine that you forget to, like, do stuff for yourself, you know? Like, it's so easy, I feel like. But, yeah. Can you go ahead and explain to uh, the listeners what is a, a fill and, like, a full set? So, a fill is... Well, a full set is when your eyes are completely bare or when you come in for your fill, but you have a bunch of gaps everywhere and you need a full set. So typically what I would describe a full set to be is either one, when you come with bare eyes or two, when you have less than 40% of your lashes from your previous appointment. So yeah, basically. Is it the same fee when they come in for a fill? Um, What I like to do 
every it's everybody has their own preference but for me i like to charge my full sets obviously like the full price mm -hmm. and then for my fills i feel like i like to vary it because sometimes like like girls come in and they need like just like a touch up and i'll be like oh you could just give me like 30 dollars, 40 dollars because i yeah. like i feel like i'm being greedy charging you for a full fill when you really only needed a touch up you know right. yeah. whereas like sometimes when girls really need a full fill it's like when you have to like go in and you have to shuffle through all the lashes you have to take out the outgrowns and when you do that like then that's aside from the ones that already don't have a lash on them and you have to infill those um but yeah that's basically what it is what's your max clients you'll take per day i try to take at least four a day every day um but if i can i'll try to do at least um five or six but that's pushing it because i get like my hand will start cramping or um, I get a really bad, like, neck pain, like, mm. I get, like, a pinched nerve, it's weird, but I try to do at least four, but sometimes I think three works out better for me, just, like, with my schedule and, like, just, like, being able to do stuff, like, at home, like, like, you know, like, little things, and even just, like, eating, like, I feel like it's such a bad habit of mine, that right. I think it's, especially because I go to the gym, like, I want to incorporate, like, more meals throughout the day, you know? And, like, yeah. that's why I try to, like, I try to really, like, see, like, when I can put in more people. But, like, sometimes it's just, it works out better with, like, three or four a day, I feel like. So, how long have you been a certified Lash Tech? Um, I've been a certified Lash Tech since March of 2023. 2023 mm -hmm. okay so how long does it take you now to put on lashes and then how long do they usually last so when i first started it took me like four hours or more to do a, a full set and it would only last them i feel like barely over a week and it's normal like when you're a beginner you're figuring that out you're figuring out your retention and stuff especially when like the weather's changing and i think at that time it was like what spring and so, like, I think I had, like, I, I think it's just because I was a beginner and because it was, like, the weather was changing that it was kind of tricky for me. But because of that, I didn't charge, like, a crazy amount. And then um, now it takes me an average, like, two hours or less per person. I think, like, the quickest I've done is, like, an hour, but that's, like, for a classic fill. And then for, like, a hybrid or, like, a volume fill, I'll do, like, an hour and a half or, like, two hours max. And that like now it'll last me two and a half or like three weeks. But I think like it's more like like three weeks I would say. Like my clients yeah. typically don't come back to me till that three week mark. Yeah. So then does it depend like the person or like it usually does last two to three weeks? Yeah, I think it's it's just different for everybody. I just think there's some girls where my technique is just not gonna work on them and there's only one person that I've had that issue with where, like, like they would come and get a full set and it would only last them, like, a week. Right. And they were the only person, everybody else, I never had that issue with. Like, their their lashes would last them, like, two or more weeks. And um, I think it's just, like, you really have to find the lash tech that, like, works for you. Right. Um, because for me, I went to, I, I went through a couple lash techs and... Yes, Cali takes a little while. It's also because I have a lot of lashes and I have a long lash line. But I always tell people, yes, she does take a little while, but she's very clean about her work. She's very, like, OCD with her fans. Like, her, like, I always, whenever they fall off, I don't know if it's just me that I'm a lash tech too, but, like, I always stare at them. And I do this because you told me about that, but I always stare at them and I just notice how different they look than mine. Mm. And I'm never like, oh, like... Oh, she's better than me or like you know but i just think like wow like i want to do them like that like how do i do it you know and she's just i she worked if i work oh my god she works best for me as my last day <laughs> but i'm not gonna be like somebody's like number one like that you know like somebody's probably gonna find better with somebody else somebody's gonna go to her for me right. and that's fine like i don't i don't take it like personally when when i see my regulars go to somebody else because it's just like like, I kind of noticed, too, like, I don't think they're going to work out with right. me, with how I do them, you know? Like, yeah. so, I think that's just how it is, but, gotcha. yeah. You got to so, learn to yeah. accept, right? Yeah, <laughs> yes. It's never, it should never be personal. Like, business is business, yeah. you know? Like, yeah. Oh, yeah, that's good. Um, I wanted to ask, so, um, when you first started doing lashes, um, mm -hmm. do you used to shadow? 
Like, do you used to watch, um, uh, like, other girls, like, do lashes on clients? And, or, like, did you kind of just, like, went ahead and just, like, started watching videos? Like, I'm, so, I'm just curious because, like, a lot of people learn differently, you know. Yeah. They, they, they get straight into it or they just, they go based off of watching videos or, like, how... how so, for me, what it was is that I actually started off one time with our friend Noemi. Um, she actually let me practice again on Dana and um, I asked Dana to come into Noemi's lash room and we did like a set on her and she was like she was I was shadowing her and then she was like okay now try it and then I would just take longer like obviously you know because I didn't know what yeah. I was doing for Noemi it was so easy like she would fan it right away put it on the lash and it would take me like five minutes per fan like it was hard but yeah after her like sh we did that maybe like once or twice and then, um, and then I just, I started getting a lot of videos, like, just on my For You page. And this is when I was still, like, being indecisive of, like, do I even want to do this? Like, mm. or is it just, some, like, another phase of mine, you know? Like, <laughs> yeah. and then, like, the more videos that I would see, like, I just, I always found it so satisfying, like, seeing people make the fan and then they would place it on the, the natural lash. Like, those videos, I love them. Like, even to this day, like, on my little breaks, I'll just watch them. Like, I used to love watching videos of, like people taking out the outgrowns or like um like the process of it and i was so infatuated by everything that they were like show like behind the scenes of being a lash artist and all that and i was like maybe this is for me like maybe i should try this and yeah that's like and then i think i did the shadowing before all that or like it was already like in the process of me already seeing all these videos but like when i did try it i really did like it so when did you feel like you were ready to start a business? Um, when, like that, you just said like, oh, like you know, I'm I'm making money, yeah, like I'm gonna go all in. Honestly, I never knew. Like I just, it's like how Kelly said, like it was just like a leap of faith. Like literally, I just, I didn't know. I was so. I remember the first time I had a client. Like I was posting on my private server. I was like, guys, the girls out here already, and. I have to like nervous pee like <laughs> like it was so much like mentally um I don't know what it was seriously like because I <laughs> like at the time <laughs> at the time I became I was just really timid because I don't know like it's just a lot of stuff was going on at that time and it just like like I remember I had even moved back in with my mom because at the time I was living with my ex-boyfriend and I lived I moved back in with my mom for a little bit and like I was just going through like a weird phase in my life I feel like and I just um like I think one thing that really that I really hated that I always tell people when even when my new clients ask me they're like well like why did you want to start or whatever I always tell them it's because like I wanted to meet people like mm -hmm. I wanted to make like friends like I wanted to meet people make connections like and just work on my people skills because I hated how shy I became because I am not a shy person like I love talking to random people like I love complimenting people like I love just like spreading that like oh my god I hate positivity. It. yes positivity yeah like I just I don't know and then just becoming as timid as I was I was so defensive like I was just so angry all the time and like I feel like I like I went through a little phase of being like problematic mm. and and honestly like that whole time that I was like going through all that I was not only keeping lashing in the back of my head, but I knew I wasn't ready enough or like mature enough to start because if somebody like had given me a hard time back then about like retention or like anything to do with that, I probably would have like popped off on them or something. And that's not professional. You want to be professional if you're going to be a business owner, you know? So yeah. I just like waited till like I started going to therapy. Like I was way better mentally. And then like, I was just at a point where I was like, okay, like, I think I am ready. And I, I just, um, I had left my job at Stoney's. Um, I got an employment and then I just invested everything into lashing. And then like, I really, I just, I spent the two, the first two checks that I got from unemployment, like on dumb stuff, like just like on clothes or like makeup. Like I did not spend them wisely but then I was like then I started seeing those videos again and I was like I could literally get all the stuff that I need right now 
and do it right now. Like, I don't know what I'm waiting for. Like, I could do it. And um, I always like to thank uh, my ex-boyfriend just because him and his family gave me a whole room to start off lashing, which was really cool. They didn't have to do that. And, yeah, like, because of them, I feel like I, I, I was able to start. And um, I like to thank them because I think, like, that was, like, obviously, like, it was a big push for me. Big um, help. Yeah, big help. Um, but yeah, and then after I started, I just, oh my god, I was so scared, but the, thankfully, all the girls that I had first did, they were either my friends or they were, they were random people, but they were, those random people happened to be, like, really, really sweet girls. So it made it so much easier for me to ease into it, rather than having, like, a rude person or, like, a, um, like a really picky, yeah, like a really picky or impatient client and then they're like i feel like intimidated discouraged so um yeah like thank god all the, like my first time clients that's good really, really that's cool. good um what, what has been like the hardest like your biggest challenge so far since you started hmm. honestly i don't think i've had like a crazy challenge like that i think maybe when I think maybe when me and my ex had broke up and I had to like move all my lash stuff like and I was like where am I gonna lash like this is what I do full time like how am I gonna do this thank god my mom came through for me like she I was lashing on her couch for maybe like the first two months that I had like moved back with her and then um she gave me that this shed that she has in the backyard and that became my little lash room. So I think maybe that was one of my like hardest challenges because I don't really think like anything else. I think it was just so smooth and it, like clientele and all that picked up so easily for me. That's good. That's yeah. good. So, so what keeps you motivated? Like, is this someone, your mom, dad? What what keeps you motivated? What keeps you going? Um. Honestly, I don't mean to get like all like sentimental and deep, but. When I was in high school, my cousin had passed away from gang violence, and I'll just never forget my grandma my and my aunts crying to me and telling me, like, please, like, leave Selena's, like, do something big with your life. And I know it's just, like, a little business right now, but this is just the start of what right. I want to do with my Hell future. Yeah, for sure. And I just, like, I don't know, I think my, my family just tells me, they're really good about, like, um, praising me and telling me, like, I'm doing so good for myself that I'm, um, I'm young and I, I want to go to school like uh, I took a little break because of everything but I want to go back to school I want to get um, my degree and like I think that's like my family as distant as I am with them they are my biggest motivation like um, yeah like I have a lot of like I love them I feel like from a distance just because I feel like I like to like be alone like I'm, right. I'm so comfortable in my solitude that like Sometimes I just, I don't like to talk to my family. It's right, nothing right, personal. It's right, just like, right. I just, I like to pop in and out. And I just yeah. like to focus on like what I need to get done too. Right, yeah. right, right. You're in your own little cubby, huh? Yeah. <laughs> it's kind of bad. Like, I feel bad because I don't want my family to think like, I don't want to talk to them. But it's just. And you're depressed or something. No. No. Yeah. yeah no, I don't really think that. I don't really think that. Right. It's just, I don't know. I just, um. No, I, I get what you mean. Yeah, yeah. I, just, yeah. I get what you mean. No, definitely. Um, I wanted to say, um, how'd you come up with your uh business name? Like, oh my god, I don't even know. I always just like, I feel like I'm really like I give all my friends funny nicknames, and everybody always asks me, how do you come up with stuff like this? And I'm like, I couldn't even tell you. It just comes to my head. And <laughs> I remember when I like I might change it because I want to expand my services, but. Lashified Bay, I don't know where it came from. I love the word Bay, I think it's so cute, and it just reminds me of my childhood. But um, I just, I wanted something that nobody had. I didn't have to use an underscore. I don't know, I was so against underscores and like yeah. periods, but like, <laughs> I, I wanted something that was like unique um, and didn't include my name because I feel like my name's so common that there's so many lash artists that are like, um, lashes by this or lashes with this or um, this lash me you know like and it's just 
I wanted something different and that would stand out. And whenever people, like, if my clients were to be like, oh, like, lush fight they did my lashes, you know? Like, I wanted something cute. Like, something girly, different, and not common. Or not, well, yeah, not common and just unique. I don't know. Right. So, what has been the proudest moment in your journey so far? Honestly, just starting. Just like, starting. seriously. Just because um, I just think about how different stuff was two years ago now and I just I'm so happy that I started and and I just can never be so grateful and so thankful that like lashing just really worked out for me the way that it did and I feel like I say this a lot but I always say like I say this with like like in the most humble way I just am so happy that I never had to really like struggle with clientele like People, I think I ran my game very, very well when I first started, like, with the $45 sets and, like, offering, like, you know, like, little promos or, like, the giveaways. And um, I think, yeah, it's just everything as a whole I'm really proud of, like, for myself, I feel like. Right, right. Mm -hmm. How, where, where did you promote yourself? Instagram? Like, how was that like? Um, I promote my own page on my own personal Instagram because right. I feel like I've, um, I don't have like a crazy big following, but like, I think I already kind of knew people in, in my hometown in Salinas and like, um, I think it was just easy for me to be like, oh, like, let me do your lashes, please. Or like, right, right. tell your friends, you know? And like, I think my friends also really helped me. Like a lot of my friends now put a lot of people on with me and like, I have a regular that comes to me. She's like, dude, I'm like... All my friends at the gym come to you now. And I'm like, good. Like, I love that, you know? And so yeah. I think, yeah, like, I promote myself on my own lash page. I don't really do, like, anything. I mean, on my personal page, I don't really do, like, TikTok or anything like that. Because I feel like that's, like, such a, like, um, like, TikTok will really target just whatever audience from anywhere in the right, world. Right, and it's right. just, like, I want to get more local people, you know? So, right. Yeah, I think like it's my my personal Instagram or my friends. Okay, for sure. That's really good. Um, what are your goals now and and like for the next six months that you got for your business? Um, I think right now I just for my business at least I wanna I don't really I I don't think I have like a set goal. I think I'm just really trying to expand more my clientele more and just try to see like when I could like take in more people. Um, like for myself personally, my goal right now is to, we'll get a new car, but besides that, I really want to finish school and then I want to get my license. Um, and then after I get my license, I really want to get my own salon and hire nail techs, hairstylists, all of that. Like, and I want to expand my services to like waxing. I don't know if I would do nails, but... I, want, I like the idea of, like, waxing and, like, facials and stuff like that. Um, and then I want to keep my degree in liberal arts for a backup plan in case, like, that just doesn't work out for me. I could just go and be a teacher like I initially planned. But, yeah. Okay. Okay. So, any advice to the viewers, um, any people that want to be lash technicians or anything, in, anyone in general, um, any advice? I would say don't be intimidated by how many like lash artists there are or how like far deep people are in or how much experience they have, clientele, following, all that. Just just do it. Like don't compare yourself to other people because I feel like that's the number one thing like other lash artists on TikTok or like your lash artist is going to advise to you. Do not compare yourself to other people. Everybody has their own technique. Everybody has their own... Um, like relationships with their clients like and you're not always going to work out with everybody you meet and that's okay you know like not everybody is meant to come to you like they're like i feel like some people that come to you are also meant to show you like patience or like how to like it's a tricky situation like how am i going to go about it you know right and one thing i will say is it's not for everybody do not force yourself to like sit there all day if you really feel like it's not for you like my friends some of my friends had tried to do it um, before I started. And, like, I told them, like, how come you guys never, like, went through it? Then they were, like, honestly, I hated 
sitting there. I hated, like, I have no patience for that. And my friends always tell me, like, I'm so surprised that you do because I'm a very impatient person. But I love to sit there and just make my fans and, like, work. And I love what I do with, like, so much, I swear. I'm really happy with being a lash artist. That's good. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, you got to love what you're doing, you know, because at yes. the end of the day, like, you know, you do it for yourself. Yes, yeah. exactly. And I wanted to know, um, also, can you go ahead and tell the listeners, like, your prices and stuff for, like, yeah. so that would be something just, you could disclose for them? I just raised my prices, um, and for classic sets, I'm offering them for $100. Hybrid is for 110 now. Um, volume is 120 and Mega is 130 And I offer, my prices are going to... Um, it's your preference, and it took me a long time to get the guts and just the confidence to feel like I can charge that much. But I yeah. charge what I charge with the confidence that I know I'm charging you for good work. And a, like I, I feel like my clients have always told me too, like you do not charge enough, like you need to charge more. My clients' moms, like they'll tell me, like you need to charge more. My mom's like you need to charge more. So. I just raised my prices, but I'm never, I always try to keep it to where it's not going to be, like, you're not paying, like, an arm and a leg just for your fill, you know, right. but yeah. I try to charge my worth as well. That's good, that's good. Mm -hmm. And can you go ahead and tell the listeners wh where they can contact you? Um, you can find me on Instagram. My thing is, my at handle is Lashify Bay. Um... That's pretty much the only place you can contact me. Yeah. I really good. like giving out my personal number for that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no, you're good. <laughs> yeah, I feel like that's perfect. I mean, like, you know, um, definitely, you know, uh, you, you went through your challenges and stuff like that. But, you know, we're very proud that, you know, you, you, you've been successful, you know, throughout your journey and stuff. Because it's, yeah, it's hard, you, you know. Yeah. yeah, thank you. Yeah, definitely. And um, we just wanted to end it right here, guys. And, um. You know, we have Lashified right here, babe, you know, like, you know, we're very thankful <laughs> yeah. to have her here, you know, and it was an honor to have her. Of course, of course. Make sure you guys set her up for your lashes, guys. Yeah, definitely. Right. Or Kelly. Uh, or, or, Kelly, Kelly. Kelly. Okay, or Kelly, too. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll go ahead and make sure to, uh, you know, tag her links down below and you guys can contact her. All right, guys. And this is another episode. Thank you. Peace guys. Up. Thank you. <laughs>